Nellie Thomas was a hustler who worked in and around his South Side neighborhood. I met Nellie because I wanted to know how people bought guns in Chicago. By the time I met him, Nellie had made a name for himself, not because he sold guns, but because he sold ammunition. It's illegal to buy handguns in the city of Chicago. For guns and ammo, people usually have to trek out to the suburbs, which isn't so easy. Most gun stores are in white suburbs, and the black people in Nellie's community don't like to go there. So they buy guns in their own neighborhood for the most part. Now, in the south side where Nellie lived, if you have money and a little patience, you can probably find a gun within a few days. But it's a lot harder to find ammo. Nellie understood this, and he capitalized on the demand by becoming an ammunition trader. Nellie would drive to the suburbs, or he'd hire people to go there and buy boxes of ammo for a few dollars each. Back in his own neighborhood, it might cost you a hundred bucks for a box. He sold bullets to gang members, robbers, drug dealers, prostitutes, and just regular people who like to have a weapon around. And when the gang wars heated up in the mid to late nineties, people bought several boxes at a time, and Nellie was flush with cash. Good money, no hassle, he liked to say. When I started hanging out with Nellie, he was becoming bothered by his success. He was making so much money that he didn't know what to do with it. Nellie also lived in a world of cash. Like most underground traders, he couldn't take large sums of money to the bank, and for small sums, he simply didn't trust banks. So he put his cash in mattresses and in large black trash bags that he hid inside his house, or that he buried outside in the backyard. Nellie was scared he'd be robbed, and so he began staying up all night with a big shotgun next to his window. His anxiety grew so bad that he started taking medication and drinking more. He was restless and fidgety. At first, I wondered why Nellie didn't just give his money away to his family or to a charity, but it wasn't so simple for him. He said he was ashamed of how he'd earned it. He didn't want to tell people that he sold ammo to gang members for a living. One morning, I went to Nellie's house and found him in tears. No one was home, and he was lying on his bed with his money all over the room. He kept saying he couldn't take it anymore, and he wanted a way out. I noticed a few large bills, but there were mostly piles and piles of one and five dollar bills crumpled up like waste paper. He was pleading with me to help him to do something with all of his money, which he estimated was about fifteen or twenty thousand dollars. He asked me, "What do your people do when they have all this stuff that they can't use?" I'm Indian, but I assumed he meant middle class folks. Well, I said, when my family has a lot of stuff, we give it away, or we have a garage sale. His eyes lit up. That's it. I'm going to have a garage sale. I wasn't sure I understood what he meant. Let me get this straight. You're going to sell your money? He grinned, stood up, hugged me, and said, "Thank you, thank you, thank you for getting me out of this mess." I asked him again whether he really wanted to do this. He would just stare out and tell me that he'd never been more sure about anything in his life. I feel like the Lord gave me a sign," he said. As the morning turned to afternoon, more people came. The first successful sale was to a man pushing a shopping cart. He eyed the vacuum cleaner. "What do you want for it?" he asked. "Give me fifteen," said Nelly. "Fifteen? Are you nuts?" I said. I couldn't believe Nelly would charge so little. "Fifteen, my man, and it's all yours," Nelly said calmly. "All right, that'll work," the man said. He paid Nelly with some bills and a lot of loose change. Then he grinned and said, "Within an hour, he could sell the vacuum cleaner down at the thrift store for thirty dollars, double his take, just like that." You might want to take it home first," I told the man as he started walking away. "Just clean it out, put a fresh bag in, try it out, take it apart maybe." "Home," the man said, looking at me. "Boy, are you blind or something? I live out of this cart. I live under the L tracks. Home? Shit, I ain't got no home. What the fuck am I gonna do with a vacuum cleaner?" I tried for a while to find the people who bought some of Nelly's furniture and appliances, but I didn't have any luck. So I'm not really sure if any of them found the cash. Nelly didn't have any more garage sales. He was still making money by selling ammo, and he still kept the money in those big black garbage bags. For most people, all that money would have been a sign of success, but for Nelly, it was just a bunch of paper that he couldn't get rid of. His problem was that he liked his job. He liked the fact that he worked and that he earned a living. The part he didn't like was the actual profits. They made him feel ashamed, and he had to hide them from almost everyone he knew and loved. 